Hey everyone, uh, my name is Alex Selmore and this is my end of the year uh, UMSL Athletics Internship presentation. Uh, as you can see to my left is, uh, is a picture of me and it also includes my two other fellow interns, Hannah Carl and Jacob Vogel. And this is actually the first picture that we took at the beginning of the year. Uh, you'll see at the end that we actually took a picture at the end of the, uh, the semester uh, at our final baseball game that was actually today. So here we go. And so kind of starting off with an overview of the organization. So uh, UMSO Athletics is made up of uh, eight men's teams and nine women's teams uh, divided into two um, uh, semesters, uh, spring sports and fall sports. Uh, basketball is kind of like the weird one. It's kind of in the middle. So some of the uh, fall interns uh, also do a few basketball games and same with the uh, spring interns and really it's more of a spring sport anyway so yeah uh so roles and duties so we do a little bit of everything during our time here um as you can see it's a long list uh starting off with production uh you work a lot with uh bob who's the play-by-play -play announcer and also the kind of glvc sports uh network uh person who uh you know who calls the game um we actually work a lot with a production truck, uh, which is, you know, recording the game and recording the audio, and it also puts it on the GLBC Sports Network. Uh, with that, you know, you have to work the camera. Um, really, there's not much to that. You're just kind of following the game and also uh, during certain points of the season, whether it's like a special announcement for, you know, the student athletes, uh, you know, sometimes we'll record that as well. And also during the uh, national anthem, we'll point it at the, um, the American flag as well. Uh, we also, you know, get revenue while we're there. And some of the ways that we do that, that doesn't include uh, ads, is uh, tickets and concessions. Uh, we work that all the time. Uh, we're either selling tickets or, you know, selling food and drinks at the concession stands. And also the uh, social media and game highlight highlights. Uh, we post that on uh, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, or really those are the only two that we use a lot. Uh, you know, during baseball season, we also do bat testing, uh, making sure the bats are able to be used during the game. We also uh, started the sponsorship project uh, that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, we uh, created a pamphlet and we also, you know, had to figure out the total attendance for the uh, so spring or fall semesters sports and also as much as we could at the time with the spring semester sports to kind of tell sponsor, uh, people who wanted to sponsor us, like how many people come to the game and how many people see the game. And again, I'll also talk about more about the pamphlet in a second. So uh, when we also work with in-game entertainment, we created a list of things to do during the game and also uh, how to get the crowd involved in the game as well. And uh, finally, the game operation side of it, uh, that's literally tear, set up and tear down of everything, whether it's from the American flag to the, diff to the timers, uh, from swimming to the basketball hoops during basketball games. So yeah. Uh, so the goals for this internship, internship was for me. Uh, I really wanted to create a TikTok with them uh, and also get as many chances to be Louie as I could. Uh, I wanted to create uh, things for to create more ad revenue as well. I wanted to increase social media views and I also wanted to learn and improve on production as we went along this semester. So during our time here, uh, I was able to uh, create media content uh, as you can see to my uh, right here, um, we did a we were able to get into a few uh, uh, days where I was Louie and we created uh, we recorded a bunch of stuff and we took a lot of pictures as well, things that hopefully will be used in the future, and uh, hopefully this will lead to something a lot bigger, a lot fun, a lot more fun to use. Um, unfortunately, we did not create a TikTok in this time. Uh, I really wanted to do that. I hope. Uh, someone else comes along if I don't get to it this summer and also, you know, just takes the media that media content that we recorded and just, you know, 
create uh, just starts creating more content for uh, TikTok, and so that can be used also for like Twitter and Instagram as well. So, like I talked about before, we also created an advertisement pamphlet. Uh, this kind of showed uh, everything that went along uh, during the games, and also you know, uh, kind of talked about Amso Athletics in general. You know, some of the uh, goals that they have, some their mission and vision statements as well. Uh, it also includes, you know, the total social media views that they get and also kind of the cost of uh, different ad times and different other uh, events that we can do for like to create ad revenue. Like one of the things that we thought of was tablings. And I think um, hopefully something like that will be created soon. And uh, kind of part of that was counting up the attendance for fall sports and basketball. Uh, we weren't, I think we even touched into softball and baseball, but I don't think we completed all that. Hopefully we get that done or maybe that gets done during the summer. Hopefully again, I can do that. And yeah. Uh, so what did I learn? Uh, now don't take this the wrong way guys, but obviously it's not always going to be fun. It there's, you know, you're going to have to do the dirty work. You're going to have to do the kind of boring things. It's something I'm still kind of struggling to learn with. Um, you know, when I was at the NFL draft, I was just not having fun with the stuff I was doing. And even, you know, a lot of times, and no offense to the baseball guys, but watching those, that baseball team was hard sometimes while doing production at the, at the same time. It was very frustrating to just sit there for, especially the double headers. The double headers were definitely a struggle at times. Um, you know, we'd be there for six hours watching baseball and it is hard to do that uh and kind of going along with that uh long hours now i wouldn't say i worked long hours at umsel like i think the most we were there was like seven and a half i don't think we ever hit eight but um kind of along the semester and along my first semester as well i did things that uh that kind of prepared me for that to uh, different volunteer events that kind of prepare me to work long hours and, you know, not have as much rest. Uh, yeah, that's just, you know, preparing yourself to work maybe eight hours, maybe like 10, 12 hours, not getting a lot of sleep and then going back and doing it the same thing again. We kind of did that with the draft. Uh, that was only like eight hours, but like still, but uh, you also get what you put in. Um, the amount of effort you put in is going to, it's going to show. Like Kevin, you know, Kevin called me out at the end. You know, I wasn't always the most productive member of our internship group. And it, it showed. I don't think I, I don't think I got as much out as I wanted to get it, as I wanted to do or wanted to get out of it at the end with the, definitely with the social media part of it i think uh hannah actually did a great job with social media there at the end uh she uh she did a lot with instagram the last few games and it actually was instant like results too like the first time she did it she got like 20 followers and a ton of views on the story that she did and it was it was awesome it was great and i love to see that and i wish that we could have done that more stuff with that with tiktok but i think it'll eventually come around um, another thing I was nailed on during the internship was, uh, present yourself in the best way possible. Uh, as I, the best way I can describe it is I am not a dresser. Uh, I don't dress up well. I just, I just don't like doing it. And it kind of showed, it kind of made a bad impression. And Kevin kind of let me know about that at the end as well. Uh, especially with Lori. Lori's very uh, stickler about, you know, dressing up and presenting yourself in the best way possible. And really kind of to sum this all up, just do the best you can. Um, put your best foot forward and present yourself in a way that makes you stand out. So uh, what are the biggest uh, takeaways from my internship? Work hard every day, go there, get ready to work uh, from the time you start to the time you end. Uh, also pretend someone is always judging you. I know that can be, that's 
can be a hard thing at times, but you, you got to do it. You got to prepare yourself to succeed in the sports industry. And the only way you're going to do that is pretending like, hey, someone's here. Someone's watching me. I need to do the best I can. Um, and, you know, at the same time with that, though, it, it doesn't always have to be uh, not serious, but like it has to be serious, but have fun with it when it's appropriate. Don't you know when you're on production, don't mess around. I'm not saying I did it. I'm just, you know, using an example, just you can't be messing around during production. You have to have your full focus on that. And, you know, especially with baseball, you have to watch the pitches. Is it a ball? Is it a strike? Uh, is it an air? Is it a hit? You know, all that stuff. You just have to keep track of that. And you also have to work with Bob too next to, you know, he, uh, he, he'll throw you a curve sometimes and uh, he'll tell you, uh, he won't tell you when he's about to go off air. Sometimes he forgets, but yeah. Um, always do more than what is expected of you. It, it shows like it actually, like it shows when, you are doing the bare minimum and people will call you out on that. It's, it's that simple. Uh, people are all like, kind of like what I was talking about before. People are always watching you when you think you're not, I, I guarantee they are. And uh, you know, Kevin will always notice and uh, Lori will always notice too. And whoever takes Nick's position coming up, they will notice too. Always pretend someone is watching you. Uh, and finally, just ask questions about everything. Uh, if you don't know something, just ask. Like they'll tell you, people are usually really helpful 99% of the time. Some people, you know, when they're busy, you know, obviously when someone's busy, just, you know, wait to ask that question. If you're someone who's forgetful, write it down, write it down somewhere and just remember to ask them later when they're not busy. So yeah. Uh, what growth have I personally had in my sport management career? So, um, I currently have this job with the Cardinals, uh, ticket sales associate. And I think this is really important because for the main reason is this ticket sales associate job can directly lead into the, the uh, direct sales associate job, which is kind of the step up, which is the full-time job, which Alonzo, who just graduated from our program has. And it's, you know, it sounds like if I complete like, you know, this year with TSA and if I apply to DSR, sorry, yeah, the DSR position next semester, you know, when I'm closer to graduating, it sounds like I can actually get it, um, which means that I would be in the position to be guaranteed a full-time job after college, which um, that's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, I, I'm not that far off from that. Now, kind of on that same note, I've also learned that I don't really like tickets that much. Um, I wouldn't mind doing it for the first, you know, year out of college. Um, I'm not even sure if I want to go directly into a job or just go and get a master's before that. But, you know, it's definitely having those options. But I don't think I would want to get into tickets long term because I feel like I don't feel like I would enjoy it. Uh, right now, the people aspect of it is hurting me. Um, people can be rude. People can be pretty mean. Maybe I'll get used to it, but yeah, I'm also currently, you know, with an internship starting very soon with uh, the O'Fallon Hoots and in their ticketing department. So I'm going to get more of a, an idea of what that's like. I think if I don't like it after the summer, then I'm probably going to move on from ticketing completely. I've also found that I really like planning and organizing. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned from the trips going on. Um, you kind of just learn all the small things that you would do differently. And that's kind of how, like, how, how I view kind of like what I want to do. Because I just notice these little things like, why are you guys doing this? Why is it like this? Why didn't you guys actually think this all the way through? You know, for example, um, I'll bring up Final Four. I'll bring this up like a million times. Uh, they, so they bust us in from this one spot, the convention center there. And yet I still had to walk 20 minutes down the almost the entirety of Canal Street um, 
to a different hotel. And I then had to walk that back at night. And New Orleans, it's not like, I wouldn't say it's the most like, it's not the most dangerous area I had to walk like it's still high traffic there's still a lot of things that could have gone wrong it's a huge risk management type thing and it definitely that should people should not have to do that especially if they're unpaid volunteers so yeah and also on that note um if i'm in the ncaa i will not be spending one hundred and twenty thousand dollars on beads and that instead i will be trying to give that back to the volunteers like the nfl does but going moving on from that um i also just talked about observing the little things when you go on these trips when you do volunteer work look at the little things look at you know what things you would do differently or look on look of how or why something is like the way it is that you know was helpful um and i also talked about this before learning to work long hours um i haven't really worked super long hours yet but i have felt the exhaustion of working like eight hours then going out with like our group at night especially in vegas like vegas was definitely exhausting uh you know we'd work eight hours then we go out on the strip for the rest of the night and then we'd wake up at five to go to to go to class and then we do it all again and it, it was definitely it, not a lot of sleep during that time but yeah, just learning to cope with that and learning to kind of uh, still function with that. So yeah, um, what would I tell my younger self? So I definitely, and this is still something I struggle with every day. Uh, stop feeling bad for yourself is probably the biggest thing I would tell myself. Um, if you are just sitting back and waiting for things to happen because you think you deserve it or you know you don't think you deserve it um you're not going to get you're not going to get anywhere you have to make things happen for yourself and you shouldn't wait for that um it's something that i've recently i guess changed about myself a little bit i stopped waiting i've done more to uh improve i, I grow on my career and I think it's, I think it's starting the show. I think I'm, I think I'm getting there. I still feel that way sometimes, um, but I'm definitely getting a lot better. And I encourage everyone to just make things happen for yourself. Don't wait and definitely don't listen to haters. You know, everyone's going to tell you, everyone's going to tell you, you know, this isn't for you. And they're going to tell you little things that hurt. Like, I mean, I, I'm going to be real here. When, you know, I had did my exit interview with UMSL. And by the way, I, I loved working, working with UMSL Athletics this entire semester. It was great. It was amazing. And I even liked all the people that I worked with. But Kevin, you know, at the, our exit interview, he said, hey. And, he, you know, he made comments about, you know, how I presented myself. And honestly, it, it hurt because that's like what most of the exit interview was about. And like, it, it kind of just, it, it, it hurt the wrong way because I, I put a lot of work and effort into that. And then, you know, he talked about my appearance, but you know what? He was right. I mean, he's a hundred percent right. I need to work on presenting myself. And I need to work on the confidence about it. And only, it's only going to help. Just, I, you know, kind of another thing I would tell my younger self is don't let, you know, don't let things like that get to you. So yeah. don't take anything personally. You will hear that a million times also. Uh, so advice about the sport management program and courses. Um, buy into it. Buy into it. Buy into it. Buy what Dr. B is selling. I'm telling you, if you buy into it, you're going to succeed. succeed. You're going to have fun and you're going to enjoy yourself. Um, sports, you know, I, I know I talked about, it's not always fun, but it's fun. I mean, we we're doing things that like no one else does. Like we'll, I'm working for the Cardinals. We're going, to, we watch Super Bowls. 
we went to the we went to the championship game for uh final four i mean we're doing so much and like this is i mean this is what we want to do like you're in sports you want to see this stuff so yeah buy what we're selling and you don't don't be afraid to reach out to anyone like we're all helpful um and yeah So, um, advice for incoming students, ask questions and reach out to anyone, kind of like what I just said. Uh, the biggest thing I would definitely say is join an internship right away. Um, when I met with Dr. B back in like June, no, nah, like July of last year, she asked, Hey, do you want to do this? Inter do you want to do the UMSO athletics internship? I'm like, no, I'm not really sure about the program. Uh, I don't know if this is actually what I want to do. And she was like, okay, that's fine. Um, that was a mistake. I should have done the internship right away. I should have just bought in. I should have bought in right there. Um, I should have just full sent it from there. And yeah, get involved in any way that you can uh, with UMSL. Uh, you know, we do stuff with the sport management club a lot. I mean, it's just really what we do with the club is the trips. And that's one way you can um, uh, get involved with Thumbsoul. But I know like Jacob Hubbard, he has, he's part of his own like Christian association as well. And um, Jake Bain is also, or Jake, yeah, Jake Bain is part of Prism as well. And there's just other ways to, you know, help out Thumbsoul. Uh, and, you know, not only with the sport management program. And finally, the last thing I will tell you is volunteer when you can. And, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities within St. Louis and, you know, nearby cities. Uh, definitely check everyone's uh, sports commission. Uh, Nashville has a lot. Uh, Chicago has a lot. Kansas City has a lot. Indianapolis has a lot. Um, Louisville has a lot. You know, there's a lot of different, you know, cities that are like, within driving the distance that, you know, you can do stuff as well. But the St. Louis Sports Commission actually does have a lot. They have a lot of stuff with the uh, NCAA within, you know, they have a lot of Division Two and Division Three championships that come through here. Uh, every so every few years they have Division One stuff as well. Uh, they had Division One wrestling last year, and they have Frozen Four coming here in 24 or 25 and also they okay i mean every and every every couple of years they also do stuff with the first and second round of the ncaa tournament for basketball and they also have the missouri valley conference so ton of stuff with the ncaa a bunch of other stuff as well um advice for current sports management students uh one, go on the trips to get a job within the sports industry. Um, I say, I really emphasize trying to find a job within the sports industry because one, you get internship hours, two, you get paid. We all know that that's hard to get both of them. So it's also hard to balance internship with a, just a regular job. So I think, you know, just finding, even if it's less, even if you're not getting paid as much, it's worth it's worth getting that so you don't have to double up all the time or wait so you double up with hours and money and you don't have to like stretch yourself thinner you know you're still making money and you're still getting hours as well and for the trips guys honestly it's just fun like it's fun to do and you learn a lot while we while you do it as well just keep in mind uh it's not it's not gonna be they're not always like there's fun moments with it, but it's not always fun. Like the draft was exhausting. The draft was also kind of boring to work, but we did get paid that at the draft. The NFL trips pay. Just remember that. All right. And um, one uh, few more things to talk about here. Um, my I guess my final advice to everyone is to go at your own pace. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of success going on within, within this organization. Um, it's okay to not be 
you know, doing what one person is doing and, you know, you know, everyone sees that someone else is succeeding and you're like, man, why am I not doing this? Why, why is this, why am I not in this position? Well, it's not that you're not succeeding. You're just going at your own, you're in your own path. You know, you're going down your own path. You don't have to do what we're all doing. It's different for everyone. I, I try to get as many different people here in this picture. Uh, and yeah, it's just, everyone succeeds in their own way. Don't compare your, you should compare yourself to your peers, but don't feel bad about someone else moving up before you. It's okay. You'll get there. It's not a marathon. Well, it is a marathon, but it doesn't matter when you get there. You just have to finish. So it, kind of the conclusion of this everything, guys, it's a great program. Get involved and just work hard while you're there. Uh, I forgot to mention, this is the final picture. This is our last picture. Great picture, by the way. Amazing picture. I had a lot of fun with these two. Um, two people that are not included in this picture who are also who are also or are still currently part of the program are yak and miles miles is a uh, major in the program and i believe yak was a minor but anyways kind of moving on from that uh i think everyone that i mentioned are great people to uh, talk to i think you guys should all reach out to me i'd love to help uh with anything for anyone incoming kind of just give any advice that I have. So yeah, thank you guys. Uh, glad you, if you made it this far, I'm glad that you listened. I hope I helped. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out to me, any of these two, anyone in the program. We're here to help. We want to help. We want to watch you succeed. And I know, I know if you reach out to Dr. V, she'll answer within like the next two seconds. So yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching and see ya.